Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our introductory video for week number five. Uh, last week in week number four, we couple, uh, covered a couple of major topics. Uh, one topic we looked at is we looked at the ethical analysis decision-making model. Uh, we talked about that as a corollary to rational comprehensive decision-making. And we talked about some of the flaws inherent with rational comprehensive decision-making that we also see inherent within that ethical analysis decision-making model. Uh, we talked about some of the bounded rationality and cognitive limitations that Herb Simon tells us about and how those cognitive limitations and that bounded rationality can have real impacts upon not just rational comprehensive decision making, but this ethical analysis model that we presented. But we did make the argument that the ethical analysis model is a good model that at least gives us kind of a, a logic model that we can use as we think through some of these ethical dilemmas. The second main topic we talked about last week is we looked at whistleblowers. And we talked about who whistleblowers are. We talked about the Whistleblower Protection Act and some of the protections that were built into that piece of legislation. We talked about the creation of the Office of Special Counsel and the role of the Office of Special Counsel in protecting whistleblowers from retaliation. We talked about some of the retaliatory tactics that we tend to see used against whistleblowers and how to identify those different types of retaliation and hopefully how to try and avoid those as well. So those are the two main topics we had last week. This week, as we move into week number five, our primary topic is going to be elevating ethical behavior in public and nonprofit organizations. Your primary reading for the week will come from chapter nine of your Savara textbook. And some of the concepts that we'll talk about is we'll talk about some of the preconditions that are necessary for elevating ethical behaviors in organizations. We'll talk about five different preconditions that we like to see in our organizations that will help us elevate ethical behavior. The first precondition we'll talk about is having a strong organizational culture. And I know in some of your previous courses in this program, you have talked about organization culture. You've probably talked about Sheen and Sheen's approach to organization culture. As a really quick recap, we know that it's important that every organization has its own culture. And by culture, we are talking about an accepted set of norms and values and principles that everyone in the organization is more or less on board with, so to speak. In organization cultures, there are three different ways that we can study an organization's culture. One way we can study a culture is through the study of artifacts. So every organization creates artifacts. We have agendas for meetings. We have minutes from meetings. We have policy and procedure manuals. Those are all tangible artifacts of organization culture. These are tangible documents that are created by the organization that we as students of the organization can actually study and analyze to learn more about the values that, and principles that underlie the daily life of the organization. So artifacts are relatively easy to find, they're very tangible, they're very easy to analyze. On a second level of organization culture is what we call the espoused values. So every organization will have its own set of values that it will communicate not only to other members of the organization, but to the environment as well. So here we're talking about things like the mission statement of the organization the strategic plan and the articulated goals of the organization. Uh, one thing that we've talked a lot about in this class, the code of conduct of the organization. So these are all the espoused values of the organization that are again, pretty easy to see because the organization actually sets out to tell people what these values really are. So that's your second level of studying an organization culture. Then at the third level, the much more hidden level, is what we refer to as basic assumptions of the organization. Now, these are beliefs and values that members of the organization hold 
but they don't talk about a lot. You don't really articulate those in public. So for example, a basic assumption of the organization is that the organization treats everyone equally. Well, that's something that we believe in as an organization. That's something that hopefully everyone in the organization is committed to. But we don't necessarily walk around talking about it all the time. It's a basic assumption that we all hold. We don't necessarily articulate. The problem with studying organization culture is that those basic assumptions are, again, much less tangible than what we have with artifacts or espoused values. So they're harder to get at in trying to learn about the culture of the organization. But for our purposes in a class like this, they're extremely important because those values and those norms and those beliefs that will guide our ethical behavior on a daily basis in the organization are typically subsumed within that basic assumptions level. They're within that less visible, less tangible level of organization culture. But to elevate ethical behavior, we need to have a strong organization culture that is really rooted and moored in these types of norms and values that everyone shares within the organization. Secondly, a second precondition to elevating ethical behavior in organization is having clear expectations. So employees know what is expected of them. You have clear training programs and policies in place, and you have clear mechanisms for control of behavior. Third precondition is positive management practices. Uh, we know the organization theory literature tells us that typically positive types of reinforcements are usually more effective than negative reinforcements. Uh, if you're a student of Bandura and operating conditioning, you know that it's usually the positive type of reinforcement that has the greater and longer lasting impact upon employees as opposed to more negative types of consequences. So having those positive management practices Usually positive management practices and reinforcements that are provided at a uh, intermittent type of ratio schedule. Those are usually the types of reinforcements that really do harden some of those ethical practices within the organization. Fourth, channels for communication. And we know this runs through the entire organization theory literature uh, with Mary Parker Fald or Chester Barnard or you name the theorists just about any human re relations, human resource management, systems theorists, any more modern theorists will tell you that communi communication is really imperative for a well-functioning organization. Communication is an imperative for elevating ethical behavior. Last week, we talked about whistleblowers. Clearly, whistleblowers don't do what they do without a system of communication. You need to have vertical as well as horizontal communication channels in place. And then obviously number five, a commitment to equity, getting us back to those basic assumptions of an organization's culture. If you have that type of commitment to equity, protection of individual rights, that type of a commitment is what's gonna help elevate the ethical behavior. So it doesn't happen overnight. It is something that is really predicated upon those five different preconditions. And we'll go through each of those preconditions. Your reading will go through them uh, in, in some painstaking detail for you. To supplement some of the reading that you're gonna be doing this week, you then have some videos that are provided for you. Uh, there's the 10 leadership uh, video, theory video that's provided for you as well, 10 leadership styles in five minutes. Uh, we also have a political continuum video that looks at the question of ethically, who's responsible for what? And sometimes answering the question, who's responsible for what, is going to be predicated upon uh, political ideology. And so this video kind of takes you through the political continuum that we have today in this country. It kind of talks about who's responsible for what and the whole idea of redistribution of resources. You'll again rewatch that justice video that you have seen before. And then we also have a discrimination video as another resource for you. So what will you be doing this week? 
after completing the reading and watching the videos, you will have another one of these multimedia discussion board assignments. For this multimedia discussion board assignment, we are going to be asking you to create an ethical training video for your organization. So assume you're a department head at a government agency and your employees are about to go through a standard ethics training course at work. These stock training courses are used for a number of organizations, but the problem is that they are usually very generic in nature and they're usually not tailored to the specific characteristics of your agency. So what you're being asked to do this week in your multimedia discussion board is using the information from the book and from the videos provided to you, create a brief customized introduction to a training course that would provide specific information about ethics for your agency. So you'll be focusing on your agency for this video. So in your video, what you'll want to do is provide a brief introduction information on why ethics are important for your organization, about a minute or so. Then provide your employees with a brief theoretical foundation on which ethical practices will be based. Now, obviously in real life training, you're not gonna get into theory very heavily and you don't see a whole lot of theory in these types of videos. But for our purposes in this class to help you find that nexus between theory and practice, we're asking you to put in about a one to two minute description of some of the theories that will underpin the ethical training you're providing in the video. And then provide employees with an overview of why a code of conduct or code of ethics is important for your agency. That's going to be another approximately one minute. Briefly provide an ethical scenario that they may encounter specific to the agency, another minute. And then briefly provide thoughts on how to address that ethical scenario, approximately a minute long. So your video should follow this type of a guideline. So a minute for your brief introduction. Uh, one to two minutes on the theoretical underpinnings of your video, of the ethical training you're going to be providing. Uh, about a minute on why code of conduct or code of ethics is important. Then provide your viewers with an ethical scenario that is, again, specific to your agency. So we're not looking for something general in nature. We're looking for something that is tailored to your organization practically an ethical scenario that could pop up any given day at your organization, and then provide some thoughts in terms of how employees could address that ethical scenario. So not a terribly long uh, video, but we're looking at the edit all up about six, seven minutes perhaps, uh, but that will be your multimedia discussion board assignment for this week. And again, so far so good on the multimedia discussion board assignments. I think everyone's doing a really nice job videos have been great haven't run into any technical issues with them uh, so keep up the good work in that regard then you also have an assignment and the purpose of this week five assignment is to help you create part of your critical assignment that will be coming in in a couple of weeks so here this is the literature review component now this is not a full-blown literature review. This is not even going to be presented in a typical literature review type of format. What this will consist of, this assignment will consist of, will be an annotated uh, annotations of three journal articles. So this is kind of like an abbreviated annotated bibliography. So you'll select three journal articles. These should be peer-reviewed scholarly journal articles. And then based upon those three journal articles, you will be creating an annotated bibliography style paper. In creating your annotations for each one of your journal articles, the questions that you'll be addressing in each one of those annotations, what was the topic of the research? Be as detailed and specific as you can. What types of theories could be used to explain the article? How did the article expand or change your ideas? And how would you relate the article to something in your organization? So again, that's going to be the, the topics for each summary, each annotation for each one of those three articles. Now, even though we're calling it a literature review paper, it's really an annotated bibliography. And so you're going to complete it in an annotated bibliography style. The way in which you've probably done this before in some previous courses, the way in which you'll do an annotated bibliography is you'll provide for me the citation of the article in APA format, 
and then you'll provide the annotation, a one paragraph summary that again addresses those four questions. The topic of the research, types of theories that can be used to explain the article, how the article, how did the article expand or change your ideas, and how would you relate the article to something in your organization. So citation, followed by a paragraph, then move on to the next citation, and then a paragraph for that citation, then your third citation, and a paragraph for the third citation. So it should look similar to what's on the screen here. As you can see, you've got your, again, citation in APA format. I do ask that you make sure that your citation adheres to APA format. One paragraph uh, summation where you address those four points that we discussed on the previous screen, and you do that for each of your three journal articles. Please double space. It'll be very helpful for me in reading your work. And as always, like I said, use APA format. So this will not be terribly long, one paragraph for each. You can probably handle this in a couple of pages. So it's just to kind of get you started on some of the citations that you will probably then be using in your critical assignment. Now in a couple of weeks when you're turning in your critical assignment, that critical assignment will require that you use at least five journal articles. And so here you're getting three of them done and out of the way and you'll just have two remaining to add in for your critical assignment when that's due in two weeks. So that's about it for week number five. I think everything's pretty straightforward and pretty clear. As always, if you have any questions about anything at all, feel free to either send me an email or you can also ask those questions in the Ask Your Instructor forum uh, within our Blackboard site. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a really great week and any questions, feel free to ask. Take care.